Hello there and welcome to this video. Today I wanted to cover the history and lore of the continent Magvol, one of the continents of the Fire Emblem series. This continent features in one game, Fire Emblem The Sacred Stones for the Game Boy Advance, the eighth main installment in the series. The story and lore of the game revolve around the titular Sacred Stones, which are holy relics passed down in Magvol. For the purposes of this video, it is assumed each character that can be recruited in the game is recruited and that no one dies. The different routes are also assumed to be two different timelines that diverge at a specific point in the backstory, as the game itself also alludes to. Compared to other Fire Emblem games, the Sacred Stones is a bit lighter on its lore, so there will not be as much to cover as in the other videos on other continents in the franchise. Magvol also does not have any known story ties to the other parts of the Fire Emblem series, aside from crossovers like Fire Emblem Heroes and the DLC of Fire Emblem Awakening, and speculations about such ties are also usually flimsy at best, so this video will not go into any of that. With that brief introduction out of the way, let us get into the history of Magvol. Origins of Magfall and how people came to live there are shrouded in mystery. It is known, however, that humans and dragons have lived on the continent for many centuries. In a distant past, these peoples presumably built some of the most ancient structures seen in later eras of Magfall. These include the Tower of Valny in the northwest of the continent, an ancient temple in the northeast, and the underground Lakdao ruins in the east. All of these ruins possess different architectural styles and it is unclear who exactly built them, but some things can be inferred. The northeastern temple possessed many statues of dragons and also some motifs, like crosses in circles, that are shared with dragon-built structures from Fire Emblem the Blazing Blade and Fire Emblem the Binding Blade. The temple was also located in the Darkling Woods, where in later eras dragon corpses could be found, as well as in the temple itself. Dragon iconography was also present in the Tower of Valny, but to a lesser extent. The tower might have been built by dragons or by humans who were aware of dragons. For the rest, little can be said about these ruins, other than that they appear to be the most ancient structures seen in Magvol. It also appeared that humans were already more numerous in this era than dragons, given that in later times the remnants of dragons were only to be found around Darkling Woods, and nowhere else. Despite this, the dragons seemingly were at peace with the humans, and about 400 years before the start of Magvol's calendar, the dragon Myr was born. The dragons of Magvol used dragon stones to take on human forms, called manakeets, though this term was not commonly used. The humans on the other hand lived across the continent in different communities. They had developed several fighting styles, using swords, lances, axes and bows, and rode on different animals, such as horses and wyverns which were unrelated to Manakeets. They also practiced different kinds of magic. Dark magic, which relied on deep study, light magic, which relied on faith and devotion, and anima magic, which was connected with the elements of nature. One notable human community from this period was the village of Kajar Pelin, located in the Kajar Pelin range, which lay in the north of the continent. One day, it was invaded by an enemy nation and nearby dragons decided to come to its aid. The warrior princess Nada Kuya of the village was given a sword made from the fang of a dragon and used it to drive her enemies away. This event may have helped to shape Kajar Pelin's culture along with its proximity to Darkling Woods as its people started to refer to Dragonkin. They also scoffed at people who called the Dragonkin Manakeets as a result. Another notable thing about Kajar Pelin was that its inhabitants practiced a prayer called Valega, wherein they aligned their desires with the world around them to make a pure wish expanding beyond their individual desires. These people were also self-sufficient, as they lived off of their own land. Around the start of Magvol's calendar, a calamity befell the continent. By unknown means, the demon king Fomortis and his legions of monsters managed to reach the continent seeking to conquer and subjugate the land to spread death and destruction. Many types of evil creatures flooded the land with darkness and ran wild, pushing mankind to the brink of annihilation. 
Desperate for salvation, the humans pray to the heavens and receive the sacred stones to combat the demon king. They may have been given by the dragon kin of the land. Given their similarities to dragon stones, the fact that the dragon is depicted alongside the stones in a mural of the war. Sacred stones were given to Grado, Atona, and three other heroes whose names are unknown, with Grado being their leader. In addition to the stones, the heroes also each wielded two weapons that were known as the Sacred Twins when paired up. Grado wielded the Black Axe Garm and the Dark Magic Tongue Gleipnir, items associated with the Dark Arts. Latona wielded the Light Magic Tome Ivaldi and the Healing Staff Latona, Holy Magic items. A third hero wielded the Stormblade Siglinde and the Fireland Sigmund. A fourth hero used the Winged Lance Vidofnir and the Serpent Bone Nidhogg. Final hero was the Master of the Iceblade Aut Hulma and the Anima Tome Excalibur, tied to the Magic of the Natural Elements. With these weapons, the Sacred Stones and the aid of the Dragonkin, the heroes fought against the monsters. In the end, the heroes teamed up with the Dragonkin leader, Morva, to confront the Demon King himself at Darkling Woods inside the temple in the woods. A battle ensued that left a mountain of corpses in its wake, devastating the dragon population of Magvol. During this battle, Latona was almost possessed by the Demon King, but he managed to shatter his own fetters with his strong will which was beyond that of regular men. In the end, the Demon King was defeated. The soul was sealed inside Grado's sacred stone, the other four reinforcing the seal, and his body left to rot inside the temple, which from then on became known as the Black Temple of the Demon King. Without their leader, the monsters dispersed or remained within the woods, bringing peace back to Magvol. Monsters remained in the woods because the blood of the Demon King body seeped out in their forest, corrupting its soil and plants and transforming it into a foul and dark place. In the wake of the Demon King's defeat, the five heroes and the remaining dragons dispersed. Morva stayed in Darkling Woods to watch over the body of the Demon King and the monsters that remained in the woods. He kept these monsters from escaping into the wider world, and would sometimes come to Kyr Pelin in the process. He also adopted Myrrh as his daughter, as her parents had died in the war. Morva and Myr were the only dragons who survived, and their dragon stones remained the last ones present on Magfall. Heroes, meanwhile, each took a sacred stone and founded their own countries. Grado founded the Grado Empire in the south of the continent, which eventually became the largest nation on Magfall. Its land consisted mostly of plains and marshes. Land was also unstable, due to which tremors were frequent in the empire. Most of the time, these were small and caused no damage. There was also a large bay in the Empire's west, on whose shores the port towns of Bethroen and Tysol were situated, and military keeps like Rickwald and Renval were situated on the Empire's northern borders. The Imperial family of Grado ruled from the Grado Keep, where its sacred twins and sacred stone also came to rest. That stone in time came to be known as the Fire Emblem, named for the fires of the Demon King's rage that burned within. Atona founded the Theocracy of Rauston in the northeast of Magfall, which held many coasts and the peak Mount Mimir, which was said to be beautiful. The people of Rauston dedicated themselves to the worship of the gods, practicing holy light magic in the process. Legends of Magfall's past and the sacred stones themselves came to be held in high regard in the country. Practically, the people relied on fish for food, as Rauston was situated near the sea. Rauston was also situated near Darkling Woods, due to which monsters sometimes invaded the country, which may have played a part in the people of Rauston learning light magic, as the magic of Magfall's bishops is well suited for slaying the Demon King's monsters. The rulers of Rauston, the descendants of Latona, were called Pontifices, and ruled from Rauston Court, where Rauston's sacred twins and sacred stone were also stored. Stone specifically rested in the palace reliquary, the third hero went on to found the Kingdom of Rennes in the middle of the continent, situated between two mountain ranges and housing plains and forests. These were home to many small villages, like Eid and Lark. To the south, Rennes had a border with Grado, where in time the town of Seraphiel was founded. It was guarded by a Seraphiel border guard, and people from both Grado and Rennes came to live there, as the town was a symbol of the good relations the country shared. 
In the north, Rennes was bordered by the Kingdom of Frelia, with the border region Mulan serving as transition between the two countries. It was also near the region that Rennes Castle, where its royal family lived, was located. The castle housed a secret underground vault, where the country's sacred twins and sacred stone were held. It could only be opened by two keys, as the lock to the vault was infinitely complex. This was done by the kings of Rennes to keep the dangerous power of the sacred stone contained, lest it be misused. Keys were reforged into two bracelets, the lunar and solar braces, which were handed down by the royal family, along with their secret purpose. The bracelets themselves were also capable of harnessing and utilizing the power of the stone. A decoy sacred stone was set up in Rennes' royal temple as part of this plan. The fourth hero founded the small kingdom of Frelia in the northwest of the continent. It was bordered on many sides by sea, due to which its people came to live off fishing and the kingdom became known for its fish-based cuisine. Pegasi gathered inside the kingdom in a, in a place called Wallace Forest, leading to Frelia being the only country on Magfall to have Pegasus Knights as part of its standing army. The country was ruled from Frelia Castle, though its sacred stone was not kept there, instead being stored atop the Tower of Valny. Finally, the fifth hero founded the Kingdom of Johanna in the east of the continent. Its landscape consisted mostly of arid desert, though near its borders there were also dry plains. At some point, a large-scale battle was fought in the desert, leading to many weapons and other treasures being left behind in the sands. Due to the barren landscape also, many people in Jehanna had to resort to mercenary work to make a living, and so mercenary guilds were common in the kingdom. The heart of the desert lay Jehanna Hall, where the royal family lived, and the kingdom's sacred stone and sacred twins were kept. Specifically, the stone was kept at the palace altar. Each of these five countries thus closely guarded their respective sacred stones, so that the demon king and his monsters would never rise again. This effort was successful, as there was a long peace after the sealing of the demon king. In time, the efforts of the dragon kin in the war were forgotten however. Only the actions of the five heroes were commonly passed down in history. The very existence of the dragon kin was relegated to a select few legends. Despite this, Kyer Palin continued to remember the role of the Dragonkin in the war and referred Morva and Mur both as the Great Dragon, who had been crucial in saving Magro from darkness. At some point, the village came to be surrounded by a sixth nation that was founded, Carcino. This was a merchant republic located in the northern mountain ranges of the continent, in which Kyer Palin was also situated. The Republic was governed by a Council of Elders, on which sat prominent merchants from the Republic, who voted on issues to make policy. West of Carcino was located the port town Kiris, where ships sailing from the North Sea docked to conduct trade. It also served as a place where people could travel to Rauston by boat, as the alternative was traversing the mountain ranges in the Republic's east. Almost 8 centuries after the war against the Demon King, Magvel still overall knew peace, but there were some upheavals in some of the countries. In this period, Grado was ruled by the silent Emperor Vigard, who had a single son called Leon. Vigard was a kind-hearted ruler, who maintained good relations with the other nations of Magvel. He was also kind to his subjects, as he would supply the poor villages of the Empire with supplies in winter even those that could not afford to pay taxes. This kind-heartedness had an effect on the Empire's army. Under his reign, the Imperial Army was led by the Imperial Three, warriors of great skill who were famed throughout the land. Originally, this trio consisted of the Wyvern Knight Falter, known as Moonstone, the Great Knight Dussel, known as Obsidian, and the Wyvern Lord Glen, known as Sunstone. Glen and his younger brother Cormac Originally peasants from a poor village who threw rocks at a stray dog that was harrying the horses of the Emperor's carriage, which was passing through town at the time. Recognizing they were trying to help, Vigard offered the two to become soldiers, and so Glenn eventually worked his way up to become one of the Imperial Three, with Cormac becoming a powerful soldier in his own right. Dussel, meanwhile, was a collector of lances, among them being a small lance crafted by the crafter Gavaleus and a cursed lance that turned anyone who wielded it mad. One time, Falter broke his lance and took the cursed lance behind Dussel's back, turning him into a bloodlusting sadist. He killed many innocent people in his way. 
due to which he was stripped of his title and exiled by Vigard. He was replaced by the Mage Knight Selina, known as the Fluorspar, who had joined the military after Vigard had aided her village to spread his kind ways. Jehanna was ruled by a king around this time, and he accepted a man named Carlisle into his service, who eventually became the leader of the kingdom's military. However, the king eventually passed away, and left his throne to his wife Ishmir, a skilled swordmaster who became known as the Queen of the White Dunes. She ruled with Carlisle's support, and he became the cornerstone of her rule, though he secretly loved her and buried these feelings as he could never tell her. Ishmer also became too busy to look after her son, Prince Joshua, but he was taught the art of the blade by Carlisle. Due to feeling isolated and wanting to get to know the world, Joshua eventually left the palace and became a sellsword. He became part of a mercenary group where he met people like the ambitious Kallak and Ayas. Joshua became particularly close with Kallak as the two formed a particularly deadly duo. Another mercenary group from Jehanna that operated in this time was that of Garrick's mercenaries. It was founded by Garrick, who when starting out was arrogant and worked with his childhood friend Zaba. His arrogance left him when he was easily defeated by a knight and gained a scar in the process. The knight let Garrick escape after seeing how frightened he was, leading to him becoming more humble. Later, Zaba was killed by Sage Saleh from Kyr Palin. But at that point, Garrick had made other friends he wanted to protect, so he founded his own group. Garrick, known as the Desert Tiger, was the leader. Other members included the Crimson Flash Marisa, who was put through rigorous training by her father to become a Myrmidon. Thetis, an orphan who had taught herself to dance to support her younger brother, the aforementioned younger brother Ewan. Ewan became a student of magic under Saleh at some point. As Saleh and Garrick had become good friends after Saleh had saved Garrick's life. Houston in this time was ruled by Pontifex Mansell, with one of his siblings and their spouse fighting to stave off monster attacks in the country. They died during one of these battles, however, leaving their daughter Lara Chell to be raised by Mansell. At some point also, one of Ralston's bishops, Reeve, began to worship the Demon King. Due to this heresy, he was banished from the theocracy by Mansell, making him quite angry at the Pontifex. Rennes was ruled by the warrior King Fado in this period, who had twin children called Ephraim and Erica. He had given the Solar Brace and Lunar Brace to them respectively, but never revealed their true purpose to them, instead disclosing this information to a retainer named Seth, with instructions to tell his children of the bracelet's purpose if great peril should strike. He was also good friends with Emperor Vigard and with Sage King Hayden of Frelia, who ascended the throne in the year 788. Finally, Garcino's council was led by Councilman Klimt, who headed the moderate factions in the council. He also had a staunch rival in Pablo, who was more militaristic and power hungry, but did not have much sway in the council in these years. Eventually, the children of the rulers described previously grew into their teenage years as the 800th year of Michael's calendar passed. Erica and Ephraim of Rennes came to be good friends with Ines and Tana of Frelia, children of Hayden, and Prince Leon of Grado. In particular, they went to Grado to study to become royalty, and did so alongside Leon. Ephraim trained under Dussel in the art of combat, and all three of them also studied history and other subjects under Father MacGregor. Ephraim often neglected these studies as he wanted to be a warrior and not a king, though Erica and Leon did. Leon developed a secret love for Erica and came to admire Ephraim due to his strength and valor in battle. Leon was a gentle and kind man, but also sickly and weak-willed. He looked up to his father and struggled to follow in his footsteps. As such, when his father fell deadly ill, he began to study dark magic with the shaman Noel and other clergymen in order to cure him. He experimented on the sacred stone of Grado and wanted to use its power for good in order to cure Vigard. Near the beginning of this, Leon was able to cure the wounds of a girl who had been burned during a fire in Seraphiel with the stone's holy power. As time progressed, however, he became more engrossed in his research and saw his friends less, especially as they returned to Rennes in this time. At one point after this, 
Leon and the researchers managed to reproduce an ancient spell called the Time Shear that allowed them to see into the future. The spell was used for good, as Leon used it to warn ships in the Southern Sea of an oncoming storm and save them in the process. However, as the spell was used more, it became clear that in all possible futures, a terrible calamity would strike Rado. A landslide would occur that would decimate the southern half of the Empire, killing many in the initial disaster and leaving many more to die of starvation in the aftermath. Igard also died around this time, shortly after being informed of this grim future by his son. Having lost his family and knowing his country would be laid to ruin in the near future, Leon was driven to desperation. Due to this, he separated the holy part of the Fire Emblem from the dark part that contained the soul of the Demon King, creating the Dark Stone. However, the dark powers of the stone overwhelmed Leon, and the Demon King threatened to fully engulf him. At this point, Leon saw two possible futures, each tied to him focusing on one of his two childhood friends. When he focused on the more naive and trusting Princess Erika of Rennes, his soul was completely consumed by the Demon King, and his body became nothing more than a vessel, allowing the Demon King to again walk the land, using Leon's body as his own. When he focused on the stronger and stalwart Prince Ephraim of Rennes, Lion was able to stave off the Demon King's dominion somewhat and retain his will, but he was still manipulated, as he thought he could use the Demon King's power for good, and the Demon King more subtly influenced the Prince. In each outcome, Lion also gained powerful and strange dark magic by harnessing the Darkstone, transforming him into a fearsome necromancer who could command the dead as his own. Both possibilities occurred in different realities that were quite similar and quite different in key ways to each other. In both of the realities, Leon's sole goal became to destroy all five sacred stones and revive the Demon King, though his motivations differed between the realities. In one, it was simply the Demon King trying to break the seal on his soul and get his original body back, while in the other, Leon wanted to use the Demon King's power for himself to stop Grado's impending cataclysm, he saw himself as too weak to do so, planning to ritualistically sacrifice himself in the process. To accomplish his goal in both realities, Leon started by destroying the Fire Emblem, and used his dark power on his father. This revived Vigard, but he was little more than a mindless revenant that Leon used as both a puppet and a mouthpiece. With it, he assumed control over Grado readmitted Falter into the army and started the War of the Stones to destroy the remaining four sacred stones in the year 803. The first invasion that was launched in the war was the one of Rennes. When this happened, Ephraim went off to Grado itself with a small band of knights, consisting of Ford, Kyle and Orson, to oppose the Empire head-on. Leon and Vigard personally led the Rennes invasion and quite easily crushed the kingdom. Selina also participated, overseeing the battles in several of the kingdom's smaller villages, as did Walter. In the invasion, Rennes was conquered, its decoy sacred stone destroyed, and its king Fado killed. However, Princess Erika managed to escape with the lunar brace in hand, per her father's orders, alongside General Seth. Seth was determined to keep the braces and thus Rennes a sacred stone out of the Grado army's hands above nearly all else. After fleeing Rennes castle, Erika and Seth fled to Frelia, which was allied with Rennes. Valtor tried to stop them and wounded Seth, but he let them go to savor the hunt. For fleeing, Erika and Seth defeated some soldiers from Grado and reached the border castle where Princess Dana was waiting due to the war in Rennes. She had been taken hostage by Grado's forces however, which were subsequently routed with the help of Erika and Seth. Dana then led them to Castle Frelia, where King Hayden informed Erika that her father had died in the battle with Grado, that Ephraim was fighting somewhere within the Empire. He had learned this information from his Pegasus Knights, at great cost. Erika intended to meet up with her brother in the Empire and bring him reinforcements. Hayden granted her a small number of trusted soldiers, and so her group left the capital to go through Rennes and reach Grado. They first reached the village Eid, which had been overrun by bandits, as the Rennes army had been destroyed and Grado was not interested in keeping order. The army helped the villagers to fight off the bandits and was also joined by some of those villagers, father and son duo Ross and Garcia. After the battle, the group left the village, but Erika eventually noticed the lunar brace had gone missing. 
On the insistence of Seth, the army followed the thieves who had stolen the bracelet and ended up at their fortress. Erika's group routed the thieves and was helped by someone who had been wronged by them, the thief Colm and Naimi, the granddaughter of the famous archer Zethla. The brace was recovered and Erika's group went back on its way to Grado afterwards, eventually going through Saha forest and encountering a group of monsters. The army fought them off, being joined by the mage Lute and the monk Arthur. They were also helped by a trio of travelers who had taken it upon themselves to fight against the monsters that had started to rise in Rennes after the war started. It consisted of Princess Larachel, her loyal knight Dosla, and the rogue for hire Rennes. The princess had taken up this quest anonymously after being inspired by the words of the court troubadour Saga. After the encounter with the monsters, the group reached Seraphiel, which was swarming with the troops of Grado and they were all defeated. Among these caught in the crossfire was the cleric Natasha, who told Erika that Grado sought to destroy the sacred stones. Joshua, who had started to wander on his own after Kalak was recruited by Grado, also joined Erika's group, as he had started to gain an interest in Natasha. With new information and members in tow, the group crossed over the border into Grado proper. While all that was happening, Dion, who the revived Higard, prepared to further expand the scope of the war. Rennes had fallen at this point, and some soldiers had crossed into Frelia and had been driven off. Monsters had also appeared across Magvol due to the Demon King regaining strength and dark energy emanating from the Empire, which had prompted Mur to investigate the Empire along with Sale. The monsters became especially prevalent in the Lakda ruins. Further the war effort, Vigard appointed three new wicked generals in addition to the Imperial Three. The Blue Barrel, Reef, Tykar Eye, Kalak, and the Moonstone Falter. Reef knew that Leon was a vessel of the Demon King's power and served him because of that. Kalak had left Joshua behind due to his own ambition, as he wanted to be a king, and he believed Grado could make their dream a reality. Falter simply wanted more people to kill, and so he wanted to go to war. The new generals were paired up with members of the Imperial Three and were all given tasks. Selina and Kalak were to lead the next invasion, that of Frelia. Reef and Dussel were to defend the Empire, and Glenn and Valter were tasked with capturing the royal twins of Rennes, to gain access to the Rennes Sacred Stone. Ephraim was fighting in Grado, north of the Keep Renfall at this time, so Valter and his subordinates tried to capture the prince. They made little progress, however, so Valter and his subordinate Tirado set a trap for the prince and drew him out of hiding. Tirado made a deal with Orson, who turned coat after being promised the resurrection of his dead wife Monica as part of this trap. Orson returned to Ephraim after making this deal. The prince decided to attack Renfall at that point, because that was the last thing any sensible person would do, thus the plan had a surprise factor. Ephraim's group invaded the castle and successfully defeated the troops within. They seized the fort and then wanted to go on to Grado Keep to deal with Emperor Vigard but the troops of Walter surrounded the keep before they could leave. The wicked general approached Ephraim and ordered him to surrender, after which Ephraim and his men fought their way through the enemy and escaped to the east. They tried to strike a blow against Vigard and along the way met Myrrh, who had been separated from Sala in Bethel, captured by Grado and stripped of her dragonstone. Walter set up a second trap as a response, this time for Erika. He and Tirado to Reef and one of his shamans, Novala, that Ephraim had been captured at Renfall. When Erika's group ran into Novala, he told them this, and he also managed to obtain the Lunar Brace by threatening to kill some citizens of Rennes. Luckily, Erika's group managed to save the people and kill Novala, thus reobtaining the Brace. After this, the group set a course for Renfall to save Ephraim. He eventually reached the keep and proceeded to take out the troops on its outside, before being greeted by Orson. He led Erika and Seth to the cell where Ephraim was supposedly held, while also suggesting that he be given the Lunar Race, so it and Rennes' sacred stone could remain safe. However, the fact Orson should not have known about the bracelet's purpose, and the fact he did not have Ephraim in tow with him, caused Seth to see through the deception, prompting Orson to escape the Grado troops that had started to assault the castle. Erika's group managed to stand its ground at the keep, until Ephraim's group suddenly arrived after hearing of what Erika's group was up to. The siblings reunited, and together with their group, the assailants from Grado were defeated. 
After the second battle at Renfall, Erika and Ephraim's group set course back to Frelia. Eventually, their group returned to Castle Frelia and was welcomed by Princess Tana. Ines also joined them after he and his troops managed to keep Grave's forces at bay while fighting them at the water's edge. He had played a crucial role in stopping the invasion as a whole, as his spies reported every movement of the Empire and he executed any exposed Imperial spies. The Royals had a war council after Ines' arrival, wherein Ephraim and Erika reported about the course of the war, as well as the fact that Grado was looking for the Sacred Stones, and the identity of the Manakeet Myrrh. In response to the stories, Hayden increased the security in the Tower of Valny. This helped little in the end, however, as an invasion force led by Kallak and Selina attacked the tower and managed to destroy the Sacred Stone. After the invasion, the tower became a place where many monsters congregated. In response to this, it was decided that Jihanna and Rausten should be warned about Grado's goals, as they were the only countries, other than Rennes, whose stones were still safe. Ines volunteered to go to Jihanna and Erika to Rausten. Ephraim also planned to attack Grado once more to defeat the guard once and for all. The siblings just had to go two separate ways once more. It is also at this point that the two realities significantly diverged. In a reality where Leon's body was completely controlled by the Demon King, most of the troops of Ephraim's and Erika's combined group decided to accompany the princess on her journey to Rouston. The plan was for her to go through Carcino, as council leader Klimt had pledged to support Frelia in the War of the Stones, and sail from Port Kiris to Rouston. However, things were more complicated, as councilman Pablo wanted to ally with Grado, lest the Republic be overrun by the Empire in the future. He tried to bribe the other elders, but when this didn't work, he started to assassinate them instead. He also sought to eliminate Klimt and the capture of Grado's enemies, and had gathered a mercenary army with his own fortune to do so. Around this time, Leon, posing as Vigard, also gave the generals new orders. Glenn was to capture Erika and Valtor Ephraim in order to steal their bracelets in order to gain access to Rannis' sacred stone. Dussel was also to go to Frelia with an army to punish the leader of Frelia's army, Ephraim. Kalk and Reef were to destroy the sacred stones of Jihanna and Rouston respectively. Selina was to remain behind in the capital to await new orders. Back in Frelia, Ines and Erika's army headed for Carcino. Ines went first and met up with Garrick's mercenaries, which he had hired for this trip. Erika's army arrived in Port Kiris before long, where it was joined by Princess Tana. Things became difficult, however, as the monster hunting trio from before and their leader, Larachel, told Erika that no ships were sailing. This was because a phantom ship was terrorizing the North Sea and sinking any ships that crossed it. Due to this, Erika's army had to take the overland route through Carcino in order to reach Jehanna and then rouse them. Before they could do so, however, mercenaries in the town started to become hostile against Erika's forces, because they had been hired by Pablo to do so. A battle ensued, in the middle of which forces from Grado arrived to capture Erika. Luckily, both opposing armies were fought off. They also started to worry about Prince Ines, because he could be cornered by the force of Pablo as he was deeper in Carcino's territory. Erika's troops just marched deeper into Carcino and came across the fortress where Ines was trapped, along with some cell swords from Garrick's mercenaries. They were arguing about the dire situation they were in, when Erika's troops arrived and helped to dispel the troops that belonged to Pablo. Ines and the mercenaries decided to join Erika, after which they proceeded to defeat Pablo and found Klimt, whom Pablo had also been trying to kill during the battle. He still supported Frelia, but he also made it known that Pablo had usurped the council. After this, the leaders of the army discussed their next move, when Ewan suggested going through a mountain pass. That pass led through Kyar Palin, and was also a more preferred and direct way of reaching Jihanna, so Erika accepted the plan. All the while, Falter was trailing Erika's army. Ewan led the way through the mountain pass, but as the army went through it, the fog became ever thicker as the altitude became higher and higher. Many monsters were also roaming the mountains, however. Before long, Erika's army landed at an abandoned fortress, where Larachel had taken up residence for the night. The fortress soon came to be surrounded by monsters, with the army, Larachel and Dosla fighting them off before deciding to join forces. After the monsters were defeated, the 
army continued through the mountains and found the house of Saleh. He was the teacher of Iwan and was willing to let the army to Kair Palin, but let them stay the night before continuing. General Glenn of Grado also arrived with orders to kill Erika. She had been accused of starting a rebellion in Carcino and slaughtering innocents at Port Kiris by Vigard. With Erika denied accusations and Ines berated Glenn for believing the Emperor's lies. These reactions made Glenn more suspicious about his Emperor and he agreed to let Erika go, after which Walter appeared, having overheard everything. He proceeded to kill Glenn so that he could not return to the capital. Erika's army reached Kyrpelin a few days later and stayed there for a while. However, monsters were sighted near the village and they were fought off by the army. After the battle, Erika learned from the village elder that Mur was a great dragon worshipped in the village. She then told the elder about Mur being with Ephraim. Saleh was thus ordered by the elder, who was his grandmother, to go to Ephraim's side. He joined Erika's army, since the quickest way to Grado was through Jehanna. Soon after leaving Kair Pelin, Erika's army reached Hanel Canyon in Jehanna. The country had already become embroiled in war with Grado. Skrado's forces, led by Kallak and Leon, had started to invade it to destroy its sacred stone. At the same time, Ephraim had captured Fort Rickwald and was moving on to Grado Keep, and Frelia had joined with Klimt to oppose Pablo's army. Due to this, the army was approaching Johanna to join with Kallak's forces. Erika's immediate concern was with Grado's army forces, however. They were lying in wait in the canyon, led by Kallak's comrade Ayas. Enemy army far outnumbered Erika's army, but Larachel cryptically told Erika that the Knights of Ralston were approaching from the north, and it just needed to hold out until the reinforcements arrived. Erika thus engaged the troops of Ayas while advancing ever further because Pablo's forces also arrived during the battle. In the middle of the battle, Cormac also arrived, as he had been told by Falter that Erika had killed Glenn. He intended to kill Erika in revenge but reconsidered after speaking with the princess and concluded that Walter had been lying to him. With his help, Erika's army was able to hold out until the force of Rauston came. They defeated Grado's forces and put an end to Pablo's army as well. The knights also revealed that Larachel was the prince of Rauston to the rest of the army. Victory was short-lived however, as Seth had received word that Jehenna Hall had fallen to the force of Grado, which were led by Leon himself. Erika's army thus made haste to Jehanna Hall to oppose Grado and free Queen Ismer, who had been captured but also had managed to grab the sacred stone beforehand. The palace had been betrayed by Carlisle, who had given in to his feelings after many years and desired only Ismer, not his country. After revealing this betrayal, Kallak and Leon arrived in the throne room. They took Ismer away so that she would reveal the location of the sacred stone of Jehanna. Meanwhile, Erika and her forces invaded the castle and defeated the troops of Grado, recruited Rennick, who had left Larachel's side earlier, killed Carlisle and seized the throne. However, Kallak had noticed from the very start that Ismer had taken the sacred stone and held it on a person. The general thus fatally wounded her and took the stone before shattering it. Erika's troops tried to find the queen in the meantime and managed to do so not before Leon appeared before Erika and apologized for not being able to stop the war. After finding the dying queen, Joshua revealed his true identity as Johanna's prince and made sure to be with his mother in her final moments. Ishmer told Erika's army to destroy the Dark Stone and passed on the sacred twins of Johanna to the army before passing away. The royals of the four nations represented in the army then vowed to stop the war as a united front. However, the army also quickly fled Jehanna Hall because fires had been lit by the forces of Grado in a gambit to kill Erika's troops. Outside the palace, reinforcements led by Kallak and Walter greeted Erika and her army. In a reality where Leon retained his will and was simply manipulated by the demon king for his own ends, most of the troops of Ephraim and Erika's combined group decided to accompany the prince on his campaign into Grado. The generals of Grado also received the same orders as they did in the other reality. Ephraim and his troops marched south, being able to slip into the empire because Ines had defended the borders of his country against Grado earlier. Soon after crossing the border, the army reached Fort Rickwald. It was commanded by the arrogant commander Gap, who cared little for the lives of his troops. 
Ephraim's forces easily managed to take the fort and continued into the empire from there. During this battle, the army rescued Tana, who had come to the front to wait for Ephraim and joined afterwards. While this was happening, Dusel, who had been opposed to the war from the start, directly questioned Vigard, but still followed his orders. He headed for Bethroen to fight with Ephraim, but Leon knew that the general posed a threat. He thus used Vigard to send Selina after him to preemptively kill him, causing a battle to ensue at Bethroen. Selina ordered Cormac to fight Dusel during this, but he was reluctant. Ephraim's army soon came upon this battle, after which Falter took over Selina's job and said she needed to go back to the capital. He claimed that Vigard suspected that Selina might betray him, though in actuality he just wanted to continue the bloodshed. Jan left the subordinate to finish the job, as he went to pursue his orders to find Erika and Carcino. Ephraim's army proceeded to defeat the enemy troops after a long battle. Due to the fact that he had been already branded a traitor, and with some convincing from the prince, Dussel decided to truly turn coat and join forces with Ephraim during the battle. The general namely wanted to stop Kalos' evil, and as such, he told Ephraim's army about the Darkstone. Ormach also joined during the battle. After the battle, Ephraim's army boarded the ship and headed for the port in Tyzel. However, during the journey, the phantom ship that was plaguing the seas of Magfall came near. It was commanded by Reef and filled to the brim with monsters, which swarmed out of the ship to attack Ephraim's ship. A tough battle ensued, during which a third ship appeared. It belonged to Princess Larachel and Dosla, who had come to vanquish the phantom ship. They joined Ephraim in battle and together managed to completely cleanse the phantom ship of monsters. Soon after this occurrence, Ephraim's ship landed at Tyzel. There, a battalion led by Kellogg was waiting to fight his army. Just as the battle started, the general was whisked away by Reef to Jehanna. The Reef also sent some of the monsters he commanded the way Ephraim to help Grado's army in the fight. Despite their combined strength, Ephraim's army managed to win out in the end and make a successful landing at Tyzel. During the fight, Mur slipped away, however, because she sensed that her stolen dragon stone was nearby. The stone was situated in the Al Bull Marsh, held by a collector, and Selina had gotten orders from Leon to retrieve it. She managed to obtain it. Mur slipped away to the marsh and was captured by Selina. She did try to convince Selina that Emperor Figard was not the person he once was, that Grado's causes were unjust. The news of Figard's death caused Selina to snap, however. She vowed to do anything to serve the shambling husk that he had become. As such, she sent her troops to attack Ephraim's army when it eventually arrived in the marsh, while on the way to Grado Keep. She also released Mur back to Ephraim, but her army was defeated afterwards and she died as well. During these past two battles, Garak's mercenaries, who had been sent to join Ephraim's army, also joined the army. Soon after the battle at the march, the army moved on to Grado Keep and stormed it to put an end to the war and seek out Vigard to get answers out of him. Along the way, Renek was recruited into the army as he had strayed from La Chelle's side earlier due to his annoyance with her. Troops inside the keep were killed, after which Ephraim confronted Vigard. He did not say anything to anyone, however, as he had no will or thoughts of his own. The prince struck the emperor down, causing his body to crumble to dust. Following this, Leon himself then briefly teleported in, explaining he had been behind the war and pretending that he was fully possessed by the demon king. Following this, Ephraim and a few people close to him sent into Grado Keep's dungeons. There they found Null, imprisoned because he was said to be executed. Null was freed and went on to explain Leon's experiments and the truth behind the War of the Stones. After that, Null led Ephraim to Grado's sacred twins. The army then left Grado Keep and made haste to the desert of Jehanna, as Erika and those under her were in danger because Kallak and Valter were encroaching on Jehanna Hall despite aid from Houston. The point at which Erika and Ephraim's armies met each other once more in the deserts of Jehanna to fight against an onslaught led by generals Walter and Kellogg is the point at which the differences in both realities became negligible once more aside from how Leon acted. The two armies unified in the desert near Jehanna Hall and, together, were able to defeat the forces of Grado that were led by Valter and Kellogg. Both of the generals lost their lives in the battle as well. 
With that, Rado's part in the War of the Stones came to an end. Most of its major generals were dead or had defected in both realities. The royal guard within the empire had laid down arms. Only Leon and Reeve remained, who led small pockets of resistance. As such, after the battle in Jehanna ended, Erika and Ephraim reconvened with each other and the other royals that had joined their armies, Princess Larachel of Rauston and Prince Ines and Princess Tana of Relia. Together, they discussed the true motives behind the war and made a final plan to defeat the Demon King once and for all and end the war. First, the army went back to Rennes to save the country from the ruin of war, to retrieve its sacred stone. The traitor Orson had been assigned to guard Castle Rennes, but barely left his room to be with the revived corpse of his wife Monica in a deluded state of happiness, his mind fully deteriorating into an entranced madness. Due to this, Rennes had effectively no ruler, so gangs of bandits and monsters continued to run wild in the country. Erika and Ephraim's army thus stormed Rennes castle and killed Orson during the battle. Following this, they entered his room and put the revived corpse of his wife, which would only say the word darling and was apparently a horrifying sight, out of its misery as well. The people of Rennes cheered at these events, hoping it would bring a better tomorrow. With that done, the twins turned their attention to the secret vault under the castle and opened it with their lunar and solar graces. Inside lay the sacred stone and sacred twins of Rennes. Erika and Ephraim claimed the stone, whose sacred power filled their braces and granted the twins immense new power, giving them much greater might in battle, transforming them into potent horse-mounted warriors. The sacred twin weapons of Rennes, Sieglinde and Sigmund were also taken out of the vault and wielded by the twins, as they would be instrumental in defeating the Demon King. After liberating Rennes, Erika and Ephraim's army headed to Rauston, since it held the last sacred stone. The army went back to Jehenna and headed north from there, eventually crossing into the valley where the Nalub river flowed. There was a battle going on there between troops of Frelia, which had been sent ahead before by Ines, and the remnants of Grado's army, commanded by Leon himself. Grado was terrorizing the river people that lived in the area, but the army of Rennes was able to fight them off the Frelian troops joining their side as well. Most of them had been killed however, so only a small contingent led by Pegasus knight Sirene remained. Leon was also defeated in battle and taunted Erika or Ephraim, depending on the reality, before teleporting away. Aftermath of the battle, Ines handed over the sacred twins of Frelia, which had been brought by the Frelian army, Erika and Ephraim, and searches for Prince Leon began. Search parties eventually determined that Leon had moved north and the army gave chase, eventually arriving at the volcanic Mount Neleras in Darkling Woods. The volcano was filled with gorgon eggs that were about to hatch into dangerous monsters, with Leon having lured the army into a trap. The army did fight off the monsters that lurked in the area and destroyed all the eggs they could, after which Erika, in the reality where Leon was possessed, or Ephraim, in the reality where Leon was manipulated, was lured away by Leon. In both realities, he managed to overpower the royal twin he was speaking to, grab the sacred stone of Rennes and shatter it. He then promptly teleported away, with Erika and Ephraim's army pressing on to Rauston Court, where the last remaining sacred stone rested. At the court, they briefed Pontifex Mansell about the situation. He allowed the army to stay the night, but the last remnants of Grado's army led by Reef attacked during that night. The forces of Erika and Ephraim had to protect the court while reinforcements from Rauston's knights arrived, which they did successfully. The next morning, Mansell gave the sacred stone and sacred twins of Rauston to the army for the final battle against the Demon King. After the confrontation in Rauston, Erika and Ephraim's army headed to the Black Temple in Darkling Woods. It was there that Leon planned to sacrifice himself to fulfill the revival of the Demon King. On reality, it was the Demon King's intent to revive himself by unifying his body with his soul and in the other, Leon intended to become the Demon King to save Grado, but later had second thoughts and wanted Ephraim to strike him down. The army closely pursued the prince, who killed Morva with his dark powers and turned him into a necro dragon, an undead type of monster. Leon then went inside the Black Temple, leaving Reeve and Morva to guard the entrance while hordes of monsters defended the woods. Leon claimed the demonic Tom Nagolfar, which held power tied to the Demon King, and intended to sacrifice himself, either for the Great Cook of Grado, or to fully revive the Demon King, depending on the reality. 
Erkan Ephraim's army meanwhile managed to defeat the waves of enemies, however, and also to kill off Reef and put the undead Morva out of his misery. Following this, the most powerful members went into the temple with the ten sacred twins of Makkel's five nations and Raufsen's sacred stone in hand. They managed to defeat the last monsters inside the temple and also kill Leon for good, since he was beyond saving due to being possessed, fully or partially depending on the reality, by the Demon King. After the prince had spent his final moments, the Demon King's soul was released and merged with his body, was fully reviving him. The fiend, whose true name was Fomortis, then decided to destroy those who opposed him, but Raufsen's sacred stone was used to trap his soul once more. Then, in a final climactic battle, the Demon King's soul's body was defeated with the might of the sacred twins and destroyed for good. With the demon's body undone and his soul trapped again, he slowly returned to Magfall. Army of Erika and Ephraim dispersed as well, with its members all going to lead on their lives, and most going back to their country of origin to rebuild. In the aftermath of the War of the Stones, Jehenna came to be ruled by Joshua and Rennes by Ephraim, due to the passing of Ismir and Fado respectively. While Larachel became ruler of Rauston several years after the war, and Ines became king of Frelia after some years and the later passing of Hayden. Myr returned to Darkling Woods and was served by the people of Kyer Palin. It is unclear what happened to Carcino after the war, but with Paolo's faction powerless, it can be assumed that Klimt was reinstated as the Republic's head, and it resumed its friendly relations with neighboring countries. Rado was also struck by the terrible landslide that Leon had foreseen a year earlier, killing many people of the Empire. Due to this and the lack of a ruler, Erika and Ephraim helped to oversee the rebuilding of Grado in the aftermath of the Calamity. Ephraim also shaped the Empire according to Leon's vision as its new steward. During and after all of this, the twins continued to fight leftover monsters which still plagued the continent for years to come. It is here where the known history of Magfall ends. As alluded to in the introduction, no games have really made any more comments on how the story of the continent continues after the War of the Stones. The soul of the Demon King remains trapped in the Sacred Stone of Raufsen. It is not fully destroyed and so still poses a theoretical threat. However, it is clearly established that the Demon King's revival is impossible with his original body now destroyed and it is said that he can never return. It is doubtful that the story of Magfall will be continued given that Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones is nearly 20 years old and no attempts have been made to follow its story up. For now, it seems that the characters of the game will continue to pop up in crossover titles like Fire Emblem Heroes and the upcoming Fire Emblem Engage, where small new details may be revealed, with few, if any, piece of major information, and almost certainly nothing that comments on events after the ending of the game. With that, a look at Lore of Magfall ends. I hope you enjoyed this video, see you in the next one. Goodbye.